Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Vanessa and I make videos about music, productivity and health. In today's video, I want to show you ideas how you can gain musical knowledge in the classical music world even though you didn't grow up in a household where you listen to Beethoven piano concertos at breakfast. There are four categories which can help you to gain musical knowledge in the classical music industry. And the first one is concerts. I would recommend to go to as many concerts as possible to gain knowledge about this music world. But sometimes it's not possible for you to go to as many concerts as you want to because sometimes you live in an area where not many classical concerts are happening and sometimes you can't afford to go to so many concerts. What you can do is to go to the websites of famous concert halls. For example, I went here to the website of the Carnegie Hall and you study the programs of these concerts. You have to have in mind that these people who are putting the programs together for these really big concert houses are experts in music and they know what they are doing. I found here, for example, a concert of the Boston Symphony Orchestra in the Carnegie Hall and let's have a look of the program. So they are starting with a piece from Eve, um, which is called The Unanswered Question. And it's a really nice piece. It's not that long, I think six minutes or something. And it's a great starter for the concert because it's well known, but I think only in musical circles. So it's not a household name, maybe in America, but not in Europe. And it's nice to begin with. And then they have also in the first half of the concert, a New York premiere of a violin concerto, which is something they always put in in the first half normally. People don't know this piece, so they don't know what they have to expect from this concert. And then after the break, they have Berlioz Symphony Fantastique, which is really a great choice because Symphony Fantastique is one of the most played symphonies in the world and it's one of the most known symphonies. So they always make sure to have a piece in there which will get the people in the concert. I don't think that so many people are going to this concert to listen to this new violin concerto, no offense, but it's not a people magnet. But Symphonie Fantastique by Berlioz is a people magnet and people will come only to listen to the symphony. And they will also listen to the other two pieces because they are in the beginning. If they would start with the symphony, it wouldn't be so great because they would start with a really, really long piece, which can be a little bit weird in the beginning. And secondly, the people would go home after the break and wouldn't listen again to the violin concerto. So the order of the program is really, really well made and the choices too. And if you study those programs, you will see that some pieces are coming up again and again and again. For example, the Mahler symphonies, the Berlioz symphony fantastique, there are a lot of things that are coming on again and again and it's worth to have a listen to this pieces who are coming on again and again because then you can build your musical knowledge. The second category is competitions and I don't speak about this really small local competitions. I speak about the really big competition, for example, the um, IID competition or the Chopin competition or the Minuin competition, these really, really big competitions. You can have a look there at the repertoire, which can be really useful to know the core repertoire of all these instruments and to look at the judges and the contestants and prize winners. You will see when somebody won one competition, they will have a lot of concerts in other halls. They will get a lot of attention there and it's good to know the names of these people. The third categories are recordings. And I know that that's a little bit different now, but they are just really big classical recording labels out there. For example, um, Deutsches Grammophon or Sony, for example. And you have to remember again that these people are experts. They don't bring out recordings where they don't think that they will sell. 
and they put a program together normally on, on these recordings where it makes sense. The pieces have a musical standard, the composer is great and the artist, the musician who is playing is also great. So looking at new recordings can also be really helpful to build your musical knowledge because these recordings are going to be great. And lastly, there's social media. There are some channels, for example, Classic FM or the Violin Channel, or there are like for um, instruments, different channels too. For example, we have Harp Column Channel. They're always up to date what's going on in the classical music world. And if something exceptional is happening, they will write about it. And you get these informations in your Instagram or Facebook or whatever you use feed. And then you are also always up to date. Lastly, I want to say that it is impossible to know all the composers and all the pieces out there, but you can gain a roughly overview about what is happening and what you have to know as a classical musician and i hope this video was helpful for you and you try out these things please give it a like if you liked it and subscribe to my channel that you don't miss any videos and i will see you in my next video bye